the Lord. Greetings to all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Firstly, I would like to thank Reverend Abraham Burgess Achin and Eugene Sakim for giving me this opportunity to deliver this sermon in this Lent season. For today's meditation, it's taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 to 30. It is the story of Lazarus and the rich man, which is a parable narrated by Jesus in the book of Luke. It is one of those parables of Jesus that affirms worldly and earthly possessions are of no use in our afterlife. People who have suffered on this earth and were obedient to God's words will receive the heaven as a reward. There are five lessons that we can learn from the parable of Lazarus and rich man. The first lesson is, we should not ignore our relationship with God by pursuing the riches and the wealth. We may seem to be know that if we are wealthy, we are favored and blessed, but it is not. Material prosperity is not an indicative and evidence of spiritual abundance. The rich man had no compassion towards the poor and there was no reference or faith in God as such. Second lesson that we see is God does not look at your physical or financial state of affairs. He looked at the loving heart that has a genuine faith in him. Many of us assume that poverty as a curse. If a person is in, if he is cursed, it means that he is poor or is in debt. But it's not. Lazarus was a beggar and a sick person. And it is very interesting to know that Lazarus is the only name that has been seen in, in Jesus' parables. Lazarus means that God has helped. It is a reminder that there is no poor person which is invisible to God. He must have had a strong relationship with God and even if in his lack of possessions of health and wealth, he did not hinder it by believing through God. Third, your choices should glorify God and to proclaim Him and not to merely just go after the worldly pressures. How we live in this earth will determine how we spend our eternity. The rich man indulged in the advantages of the wealth and positions offered him and only think about his happiness. Remember that our decisions, what we make in our life and the attitude we exhibit will be having a last longing consequences. The fourth lesson we see that use all our abilities and energies and wealth to honor God by helping the least of people among us. Never neglect the poor and the oppressed. Cultivate the habit of sharing what you can spare. That is, taking care of the sick is an important aspect of God's ministry and self-communion of love. We should prioritize the art of sacrificial and generous giving. The fifth lesson, believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as our Lord and Savior today so that you may process our eternal life which is granted by our God gracious father in heaven through his beloved son. We cannot escape judgment. Everyone will be judged according to his works. There are second chances. There are no second chances. Judgment to hell is a permanent one and there is no escape out of it. The rich man had many opportunities to repent from his sins but he did not and he had his consequences which lead him to hell. We should never refuse to repent our sins as of our life in this earth is a short span and we may die at any moment. In this Lent season, our takeaway from this parable of Lazarus and the rich man is that people's minds are always committed to disobedience. They will always find ways to justify the lifestyle and insubordination to God's word. Even if the dead arise and testify, people will harden their hearts like Pharaoh hardened their hearts to Israelites and will be unwilling to obey and to believe in God. The parable teaches us that spiritual blindness causes us to humble from aimlessly ignore that there is no one around us or not to see the beauty that the, in the world that God has given to us. It is not that Rich did not believe he found himself in torment because of the way and the consequences and the things he done in his life and didn't see the poor and his people to help them. If as it says in James chapter 2 verses 40, What good is it if someone says he has faith but does not have in works? 
Can that faith save it? If a brother or a sister who is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food and one of us may go and say that go in peace be warmed and filled, it doesn't make any sense. Without even giving the things that they need in their daily life and like I told you, faith itself, it does not have any works, it is it there. Jesus is asking his listeners to open their eyes and ears and to see his simple commandments in the gospel as it says. Love your neighbor as yourself in Mark chapter 12 verses 31. All whether rich or poor must die, whether we look at wives, they die and leave their wealth to others as written in Psalms chapter 49 verses 10. Death is an inevitable for all of us and there is no escape from it. We must prepare our future dwelling place now itself through charity, helping people and having patient endurance. May God bless us all.